The casting for the movie Viva Zapata was a careful process. Marlon Brando was chosen for the lead role of Emiliano Zapata after a series of screen tests that showed his strong presence and ability to bring depth to the character. Anthony Quinn was selected to play Zapata's brother Euphemio after the director saw the chemistry between him and Brando. Quinn's performance was powerful, earning him an Academy Award. Jean Peters was cast as Josefa Zapata, Emiliano's wife, because of her screen test that captured the character's spirit. The director wanted actors who could portray the revolutionary fervor and personal struggles of the characters, leading to a cast that brought the story to life with authenticity and passion. In the 1952 film Viva Zapata, director Elia Kazan showcased his unique approach to storytelling by focusing on the real-life story of Mexican revolutionary Emiliano Zapata. Kazan's direction was heavily influenced by his background in theater and his belief in using cinema as a tool for social commentary. He worked closely with the writer John Steinbeck to develop a script that was both truthful to the historical events and emotionally engaging. The director's style is evident in the film's use of natural landscapes and authentic settings which added a layer of realism to the story. Kazan encouraged his actors to immerse themselves in their roles, often using their personal experiences to deepen their performances. This collaborative effort with the cast and crew helped to create a powerful and realistic portrayal of Zapata's fight for justice and land reform. The film remains a significant work in Kazan's career and a memorable depiction of a pivotal figure in Mexican history. Viva Zapata is a film from 1952 that tells the story of Emiliano Zapata, a leader in the Mexican Revolution. This movie stands out for its honest portrayal of a man fighting for justice and the rights of farmers. It's a story that shows the struggle for freedom and fairness, something that never gets old. That's why it remains a strong symbol in the movie world. There's a scene where Zapata speaks to the farmers that really sticks with him. It shows how one person can inspire many to stand up for what's right. Now, we're curious about you. What's your favorite memory related to Viva Zapata? Did it inspire you or teach you something new? Share your stories with us in the comments. We're excited to hear what you have to say. The movie Viva Zapata from 1952 was a big project. The team built large sets to look like Mexico in the early 90s. They filmed in remote areas, which made it hard to get people and equipment to the right places. They used trains and trucks to move everything. The film used new ways of shooting scenes to make them look real and powerful. They also used special cameras to capture the action up close. This was not common at the time. The team worked hard to overcome these challenges and make a film that looked true to the story they were telling. The movie Viva Zapata offers a deep look into the struggle for power and its effects on people. It is beautifully filmed and the story is told with great skill. Marlon Brando's performance as Zapata is different from what many might expect. His acting style, which was new at the time, might not appeal to everyone. He seems to focus so much on his character that he doesn't connect as much with the other actors. This could be seen as a reflection of Zapata himself, who is portrayed as a man of action rather than a thoughtful leader. The real tragedy of the story is that Zapata, despite being a symbol of hope, fails to see the better path for leadership, a theme that becomes clear as the story unfolds. The film is strong enough to stand on its own, even if Brando's performance is not what some might consider his best. It's a powerful film that tells an important story about leadership and legacy. The film Viva Zapata from 1952 has a musical score that supports the story and the feelings it wants to share. The music was created by Alex North, who worked closely with the director Aliyah Kazan to make sure the music fit the scenes and feelings of the movie. The soundtrack uses traditional Mexican sounds to help tell the story of Emiliano Zapata, a leader in the Mexican Revolution. The music helps viewers feel the struggle and hope of the people. The musicians recorded live, which was not common at that time, to capture the energy and spirit of the revolution. The score is known for its power to connect with the audience and bring the film's message to life. In the world of classic cinema, behind-the-scenes tales often rival the drama on screen. Such was the case during the production of a well-known film about Emiliano Zapata. Anthony Quinn, who played Zapata's brother, initially felt he was better suited for the lead role, believing his looks matched the part. The dispute led to a unique contest between Quinn and Marlon Brando, with the two actors engaging in a light-hearted challenge by the Rio Grande. Despite losing, Quinn's performance earned him the highest acting honor 
an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Meanwhile, Marilyn Monroe sought to be part of the film, but was not cast. The decision was reportedly influenced by doubts about her drawing power and acting skills. On a more collaborative note, the scriptwriting process fostered a strong bond between Elia Kazan and John Steinbeck, with the latter often carving wood as they worked together in Steinbeck's home, crafting the story that would captivate audiences. These moments reflect the blend of competition, aspiration, and creativity that defined the filmmaking process. In the movie Viva Zapata, the scene where Emiliano Zapata enters the presidential palace stands out. Directed by Elia Kazan, this moment shows Zapata, played by Marlon Brando, walking through the grand halls with a mix of determination and discomfort. The camera follows him closely, capturing his expressions and the reactions of those around him. This scene is powerful because it shows a simple man in a place of great power, feeling out of place. The lighting is stark, highlighting the contrast between the lavish surroundings and Zapata's humble appearance. Actors and filmmakers have said this scene was key in showing Zapata's character, a leader who did not seek power for himself, but was driven by the desire to help his people. It leaves viewers feeling the weight of Zapata's struggle and his commitment to his cause. In his first film role, Frank Dakova made a notable appearance. Despite having significant dialogue and delivering important final words in the film, Guy Tomagin's portrayal of Eduardo did not receive credit, which is unusual given that even less significant roles were acknowledged. Additionally, this film was held in high regard by former President George Bush, who was so inspired by it that he named his oil company in its honor. The 1952 film Viva Zapata had a significant effect on society and culture. It told the story of Emiliano Zapata, a leader in the Mexican Revolution. This movie showed the struggle for justice and human rights, and made people think about these important issues. The film also showed Mexican culture and history, which helped people learn more about Mexico. The actor Marlon Brando played Zapata, and his performance was very powerful. It made many people interested in the story and the real Zapata. The movie had a strong message about fighting for what is right and standing up against unfairness. This message is still important today. The film is remembered for its storytelling, acting, and how it made people feel and think about big ideas. In the early stages of casting for the historical drama, Tyron Power was considered for the lead role, but it ultimately went to Marlon Brando. Brando's performance stood among a notable group of actors who delivered Oscar-winning performances, including Vivian Lee and Carl Malden. Notably, Anthony Quinn's portrayal in the film earned him an Academy Award, sharing the spotlight with his father-in-law, Cecil B. DeMille, who received the Best Picture Award for another film the same year. The 1952 film Viva Zapata received positive reviews for its story and acting, especially that of Marlon Brando, who played the lead role. The movie tells the story of Mexican revolutionary Emiliano Zapata. It was directed by Elia Kazan and written by John Steinbeck. The film was praised for bringing the struggles of the Mexican people and their fight for justice to the big screen. Audiences appreciated the film for its honest portrayal of a people's hero and the personal and political challenges he faced. The film was nominated for several Academy Awards, including Best Actor for Marlon Brando and won Best Supporting Actor for Anthony Quinn. This recognition at the Oscars was significant for everyone involved, as it highlighted the film's quality and the talent of its cast and crew. It also helped to cement the film's place in cinema history as a noteworthy and respected work. In his acting career, Marlon Brando took on roles that had him portray characters from a variety of backgrounds, starting with this film where he played a Mexican revolutionary leader. This role was the beginning of a series where he would later adopt identities from different nationalities, including German and Japanese. Before the film got its final name, actor Richard Kunt showed great interest in the leading role back in 1949 when it was known as Beloved Tiger. Additionally, the film reached audiences through the airwaves when the Lux Radio Theater presented a one-hour radio version of the story featuring Gene Peters, who also acted in the original film on November 3, 1952. During the filming of Viva Zapata, Marlon Brando, who played the lead role, was known for his dedication to his character. He spent a lot of time with local farmers to understand their way of life and bring authenticity to his role. The director, Ilya Kazan, 
encouraged this, believing it would add depth to the film. Anthony Quinn, who played Brando's brother, also immersed himself in his role, which led to him winning an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. The cast faced tough conditions while shooting on location in rural areas, dealing with heat and rough terrain, but they formed a close bond that helped them deliver powerful performances. The crew worked tirelessly to capture the essence of the story, often working long hours to make the most of the natural light. The film's production was a true team effort, with everyone from the actors to the set designers contributing to the film's success. In the early stages of casting, Julie Harris was considered for the role of Joseph Zapata, which later went to Gene Peters. The film was initially a project at MGM in the 1940s, with Robert Taylor in mind for the lead. This film is part of director Aaliyah Kazan's notable works, positioned between his acclaimed collaborations with Marlon Brando, A Streetcar Named Desire, and On the Waterfront. The 1952 film Viva Zapata holds a special place in movie history for its storytelling and portrayal of the Mexican revolutionary Emiliano Zapata. Directed by Elia Kazan and written by John Steinbeck, it is known for Marlon Brando's powerful performance which earned him an Academy Award nomination. The film's honest depiction of a people's struggle for justice and its use of actual locations for filming influenced future directors to seek authenticity in their work. It inspired other movies about social change and revolution, encouraging filmmakers to explore similar themes and real-life figures with depth and respect. The film also helped to shape the way historical figures are portrayed in cinema, blending real events with dramatic storytelling to bring past heroes to life for new audiences. This film earned a spot on the American Film Institute's list for top film scores, highlighting its musical significance. Marlon Brando, known for his dedication to roles, was chosen for the lead part after a test in early 1949. His commitment was evident on set in Texas, where his playful antics included setting off firecrackers and serenading a co-star late at night. He even startled everyone by pretending to be dead after a scene. Brando's unique approach to life and acting often led him to share unusual personal experiences like eating exotic foods with reporters. In her first role, Nina Verla stepped onto the screen, marking the beginning of her journey in film. Years later, a book titled Zapata emerged, attributed to John Steinbeck, leading some to believe it was the screenplay for the earlier film. However, the book contained a detailed plan for a different movie about Emiliano Zapata, filled with extensive historical research. Titled Zapata the Little Tiger, it lacked any introduction or details about its creation or the actual film by Kazan, highlighting significant differences from the movie, indicating it was an early draft that underwent many changes. Meanwhile, Anthony Quinn and Marlon Brando, who had both portrayed Stanley Kowalski in A Streetcar Named Desire, joined forces again in this project, bringing their shared experience from the stage to the screen. In the summer of 1952, a film received its Italian censorship approval, marked by Visa number 12354. This film is notable for featuring both Alan Reed and Henry Corden, who lent their voices to the beloved character Fred Flintstone, though they never shared a scene. It also holds a special place as the favorite film of Senator John McCain, highlighting its appeal across generations. In his first film role, Henry Silva appeared on the big screen. Meanwhile, Anthony Quinn's performance as Stanley Kowalski in A Streetcar Named Desire on Tour had been so powerful that some critics preferred him over Marlon Brando, who first played the role. Director Ilya Kazan, known for encouraging a competitive spirit among his actors, saw this dynamic unfold on the set of the film. Quinn and Brando, despite being rivals, formed a strong bond, much like the brotherly characters they portrayed. In a twist of fate, Jack Palance, who was initially considered for the lead role by Kazan, ended up leaving his contract with Fox after being offered the part of the protagonist's brother, a role he declined. This decision came after Palance had served as Quinn's understudy in Streetcar and lost to Quinn at the Oscars for his performance in another film released the same year. In the making of this film, Marlon Brando took on the role of the revolutionary leader, but the production faced a real-life tragedy. During the filming, two stuntmen lost their lives, which cast a shadow over the project. This sad event is a reminder of the risks taken to bring stories to life on screen. The loss was felt deeply by the cast and crew, who had to continue their work in the face of such sorrow. 
If you've seen the 1952 film Viva Zapata, we'd love to hear how it touched your life or changed the way you see movies. Do stories help us connect and see films in new ways? Please share your thoughts, and if you like our content, don't forget to hit the like button, share with friends, and subscribe for more discussions on classic cinema. Your participation makes our community richer. Share your story today.